Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're going to get started, but we're going to start this groundbreaking uh, with an uh, invocation. Uh, Reverend Dr. Bobby Manning, uh, please come up, sir, uh, to kick us off. Good afternoon, everyone. Let's prepare our hearts to pray. Our Lord, our majestic Father, we thank you so much for the beauty of this day and the grandness of this celebration. We thank you for all of the leaders that are gathered here and community stakeholders as we break ground and look forward to what is to come for Drew Freeman Middle School. We thank you, Lord, for this project and all of the schools that will be benefited and blessed and all the communities that will be benefited and blessed. We thank you and ask your presence with us today in the Christ's name. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, I am Jason Washington, um, Director of Public-Private Partnerships for Prince George's County Public Schools, and welcome to the new Drew Freeman Middle School Groundbreaking. Um, it is a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to see everyone. Uh, and. Uh, in respect of everybody's uh, tolerance for the heat, we're gonna move as quickly as possible. Uh, I would ask that everyone that is speaking to respect time limit of roughly two minutes. Uh, one minute would be totally fine as well. Uh, after that, we will take pictures uh, as promptly as possible to get people in and out. There are a couple of things that I wanna highlight for everyone. Uh, you should see signs around with QR codes uh, that talks about stay in the know. Uh, we ask that you scan that to join the newsletter. Everyone on the newsletter will get uh, biweekly reports on the status of construction, understand what's going on as our way of uh, being as transparent and communication, communicating as much information as possible to the community as we move forward. Secondly, on your way out, at the registration table, there's a QR code where you can click that to see the fly-through video of the new Drew Freeman Middle School and all of the other schools uh, to show you what's coming and what's uh, around the corner. So to kick this program off, I would like to introduce the principal of Drew Freeman Middle School and my fraternity brother, Principal Dallas Lee. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dallas Lee, and I have the great privilege of serving as the proud principal of Drew Freeman Middle School. It gives me great pleasure to welcome scholars, educators, parents, community members, government officials, school board members, county executive also Brooks, and our CEO, Dr. Monica Gosen to Drew Freeman Middle School's groundbreaking ceremony. I'd like to take a minute and recognize Drew Freeman Middle School staff members, educators, parents, and guardians. They're extremely skilled at using a range of tools in order to increase opportunities for our kids. In the past year alone, I've witnessed the most creative lessons using Pear Deck, Nearpod, Flipgrid, Screencastify, and Kahoot, just to name a few. And in a few short years, we were able to use new tools in our brand new building in order to facilitate learning. We're looking forward to media lab. We're looking forward to a media lab, a production studio, a classroom geared towards science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, also known as STEAM. We're looking forward to open learning spaces where scholars can work collaboratively and state-of-the-art classrooms with the latest technology. We're all grateful and excited about the new beginnings that are ahead for the scholars, staff, and parents and guardians of Drew Freeman Middle School. Above all, 
our new school will serve as a much needed tool that can increase post-secondary opportunities for our scholars. As principal, I would like to thank you for your partnership, your advocacy, and support. Big things are on the horizon for Drew Freeman Middle School. So stay tuned as we continue to operate as one team with one goal in order to produce limitless possibilities for our kids. And now I have the great honor of introducing rising eighth grade scholar, Kobe Mena Flores. His avid teacher, Ms. Wright, suggested that Kobe speak today. Come on, Kobe. She shared that Kobe is pleasant, respectful, and always shares positive energy. Please welcome Kobe Mena Flores. Good, good afternoon. Hello, my name is Kobe Mina Flores, and today I'm a, I'm a rising eighth grader in the honors program. I am appreciative of my teachers for being there when I need them and for everyone to explain the work when we don't understand it. I also appreciate how the janitors clean the school, and it's very clean. I think the new building would be would mean like a new beginning, a fresh start to me and my classmates. The new building could bring many opportunities to many students. These opportunities could could be more items for academic purposes, for example, textbooks, workbooks, and this would help students learn and get for information and get interested to something for that topic or subject. Also want to say thank you to my Advent teacher, Miss Wright, for recommending me for this opportunity, and I very much appreciate that. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sean Matlock. I'm the director of capital programs, and I'm glad that you're here to celebrate the groundbreaking of this new school, and we're very excited. I'm here to give you a brief overview of how we got here. So to start off with, there were two pieces of legislation that were instrumental in creating this opportunity. The first was created by our state delegation down in Annapolis. It was a law that expanded the abilities of counties and school systems to finance their programs, their construction programs. This made it possible for the county council to do what they did, which was create a statute that created a work group and allowed for the financing of, an, of a public-private partnership for the development of this school. That work group consisted of members of the county executive staff, members of the, the uh, county council staff, county council members, board members, and school administration staff. And we came together as a team to develop the, this overall program. This program would not be successful without all the cooperation, especially of our county executive and our CEO and our chief of staff who were instrumental in making this possible. In addition, subsequent to our procurement, this deal is being really tr dramatically pushed by our director of, of, of um, public-private partnership, Jason Washington, who's, been, who's come in and really driven this program forward. Well, the reason why we had to do this, and this is a very important, about 2014-2015, led by our then COO, Monica Golson, who's now our CEO, they did a study that determined that we needed roughly $8.5 billion to modernize our school system for 100, and 100 schools to be updated. And we're not getting $8.5 billion. In fact, when I came on board, I said I was excited because we were getting that $425 million a year. Really, we're getting about 160. 
And a lot of that goes to just maintaining our facilities and, up in, you know, replace and kind items. So it's very difficult to, to build when you don't have the bricks. So this is a way of stretching out our bricks. It's a way of financing over a longer period of time our ability to construct schools. By using this, we're using a small portion of our budget in order to move things along. Well, that's generally how we got here and what we're doing. And I'm very excited that we're going to build these six schools over this next two-year period, which is a much faster delivery schedule than we're ever being able to do otherwise. And I want to thank everybody who's here for coming out to celebrate and all those, those people that are part of this team, this team Prince George's County, that helped us build, it, that helped to get this project going. At this point, I would like to uh, invite uh, Kenny Harris to come up here from our board of direct, our new school board member to come up here and speak uh, about this uh, our program. Thank you. Hey, hey, good evening, everyone. Or good afternoon, sorry. The heat's getting to me. <laughs> so first off, I want to give a big thank you to the county executive, CEO, representatives, uh, Mr. Jason Washington, everyone involved in this project. Um, as some of you might know, I come from a STEAM background, so I want to brag on the name of the school just a little bit, Drew Freeman. Um, stems from uh, Dr. Jesse Freeman, who served 27 years here in the county. Uh, started off as a science teacher at Francis Scott Keys, and then eventually became the principal of Drew Freeman. Um, amazing brother. He pushed for science, technology, engineering, mathematics initiatives. So I am so proud and so excited for what this school is going to bring. And the second, Dr. Charles um, Drew actually was a surgeon and medical researcher who pushed for uh, blood banks in World War II marched on racial segregation and eventually helped the uh, to to for the Red Cross Association to allow transfusion between African Americans and anyone else. Um, so amazing brothers, very inspirational, and I couldn't think of a better name for the school. Again, originally built in the 1960s. Uh, can't wait to see the new building. Extremely proud. We're doing this for our students, doing this for our staff, and most importantly, doing it for, against students like Kobe. So thank you so much for coming out today. And am I introducing the next person? Uh, no, I'm not. OK. <laughs> Thanks so much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brandy Rogers McDonald. I am the project executive for Prince George's County Education and Community Partners, also known as PGC ECP, the equity partners in this momentous project. I bring greetings on behalf of one of the partnering entities of PGC ECP, Fingate Asset Management. At Fingate, we are a leading investor and trusted developer to over 40 infrastructure projects across North America with a portfolio value of over $15 billion. While we have been a valued member of the infrastructure community in Canada since 2006, we are rapidly expanding our work in the U.S. infrastructure market with several key projects. And we look forward to developing more schools and more infrastructure assets for thriving jurisdictions like Prince George's County, Maryland. We are excited to be a part of this long-awaited day a milestone that is truly the first of its kind here in the U.S. And we are incredibly thankful to, the one, to, to, one of the, to be one of the many partners that are a part of the collaboration planning efforts that have brought this historical project to fruition. We are also proud to be a part of the project's $1 million endowed fund supporting scholarships, student internships, mentoring opportunities, and apprenticeships across the county. When this project is, is, is complete, the Drew Freeman community will not only have a beautiful state-of-the-art school for its students and educators, but it will also be one step closer to fulfilling Prince George's County economic development goals. I would like to take the time to thank those who helped us reach this milestone, for without your personal investment in the project, we would not be here. First, I would like to thank, to thank Prince George's County Executive Angela Also Brooks. Prince George's County Council, 
Prince George's County School Board, Dr. Monica Goldson, PGCPS Chief of Executive Officer, PGCPS Executive Team, and our key partner from PGCPS and my counterpart, Jason Washington, Director for the PGCPS Public-Private Partnership Program. Thank you for believing in us and choosing the PGC ECP team to take on this historical project. We are honored to be serving the Prince George's County community and look forward to the continued development of this long-term relationship. To our key partners in this project, Gilbane Development, Gilbane Building Company, Santec, Coordinate Construction, Warren Builds, Arel Architects, Honeywell, and a whole host of subcontracting partners. Thank you for your dedication and hard work to the development of this project. We are a team of professionals who take this project and our partnership with PGCPS to heart. We look forward to working with you to deliver this beautiful new school for our future leaders of tomorrow. And finally, to our clients who believed enough in this project to invest in such a historical event here in the US, we are grateful for the trust you have placed in FinGate, our investment approach, and our projects. So thank you so much for having us and allowing us to be here. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Monica Goldson, the proud Chief Executive Officer for Prince George's County Public Schools. Welcome to the new location for Drew Freeman Middle School. Last year, I had the opportunity to have some friends join me here to talk about the importance of the Blueprint Project. And that was county council members, our county executive, business members, and the person who I call the mayor of Suitland, Elsie Jacobs. Just want you to know, she stole the show when we were here. And I think she's part of the reason that we are here today, because she sold to our community the importance of replacing Drew Freeman Middle School. This building was constructed in 1960. 1960. And if you look at the building behind me, you can tell that not much has changed since it was constructed. But in public education, 1960 feels like a lifetime ago. The way we teach and the way our students learn has dramatically changed. We need environments that support the way that we teach and learn today so that we can best nurture the scholars of tomorrow like Kobe and give them every opportunity for success. I have no doubt that other school systems in the state of Maryland and beyond will look at Prince George's with admiration and inspiration for moving one step closer to ensuring that every child achieves their highest potential in their modern school buildings. Earlier today, we announced that the Blueprint Schools program received a prestigious international award as one of the best education infrastructure deals in North America. What an amazing achievement. That is only possible because of our delegation on the House side, the Senate side, county council members, Board of Education members, our county executive, and as our Senator um, Joanne Benson would always say, Lottie Dottie and everybody. So thank you to all of you who have contributed to that. Today is possible because of you. So again, thank you for joining us. It gives me great pleasure now to introduce to you our county executive, Ms. Angela Also Brooks, who is a strong advocate for public education well beyond the regular operating hours. I appreciate her love, care, and concern for our students and families. She texts me all the time, well, beyond, well beyond those business hours, but I am grateful for that because she truly does love our children. Welcome and thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It really is. It's so awesome to be out here on a day when it is hotter than July, right? We, Stevie Wonder said it best. And so I'll speak quickly, uh, first beginning by thanking Dr. Golson. She mentioned that I call her beyond business hours. I think that's a tickler to tell me call a little earlier. 
Uh, but what I should tell you is that I have never, ever called her when she didn't receive the call and she wasn't prepared for the call. She's ever thinking, I call her with a problem, and I can tell you I can always count on her having a solution before I can even get it out. And so I want to thank her uh, for her tremendous leadership. I want to thank so many who are here today, uh, beginning uh, with Jason Washington. Thank you so much. Jason has been the best advocate we could think of, just a tremendous professional who has helped to shepherd us through this process. Uh, I want to thank Principal Dallas Lee. You can already tell he's the kind of principal I would want to have uh, if I were in middle school. The energy comes through. So thank you so much, uh, Principal Lee. And also, what can we say about Kobe Minaflores? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. He's the reason that we are here. And he just confirms for us so much how bright our future really is. He's composed and mature and intelligent. We're so proud of you, and we thank you also. Uh, Sean Matlock, I want to thank. I want to thank also the members of the Board of Education and our chair, who you will hear from, Juanita Miller. Uh, what can we say? You're going to hear from the chair of the county council, the people's champion, Calvin Hawkins. want to thank him as well as Rodney Streeter, who, uh, it, who I think you'll hear from uh, as well, yes, here today. So the council, thank our uh, delegation in Annapolis. These folks hit the skin off the ball. They really did. I want to thank so many. I see Andrea Harrison. want to thank her for being here today. You're going to hear from great uh, Senator Joanne C. Benson, who tells us about Lottie Dottie and everybody. And, ten, and you know what? She deserves more than anyone a day like today who has dedicated decades of her life to the education of our children and, uh, and is so serious about it. And so I do want to thank her. I've never seen her. I just pray that God will make me as strong as Senator Benson. Uh, we just recently celebrated her 80th birthday, and I can't tell. I can't tell. This lady is so sharp. I just hope uh, that I will be like her when I grow up. And so we're going to hear from her in a minute. Today, essentially, to make a long story short, we are here to deliver on a promise. We are so serious about the promise that we're delivering on. And that promise is to the children of Prince George's County, to those who educate them, to their families, saying to them that we believe that their education, we understand that in America, education is the great equalizer, and saying to our children that we believe that they are valuable, we believe in their dignity, and we believe that they deserve to have facilities that are befitting of their dignity. And so today is delivering on a promise that says a 60-year-old school should come down and we should build a new one, and we should build one that is ready for the 21st century, and that we should have our children in those facilities, and we should do it now. There's an urgency about this that I don't think can be missed, because the truth of the matter is, when, when, when you heard a moment ago that Elsie Jacobs was here, the mayor of Suitland, who had to get off a little bit, and the reason she had to do that was because we had some detractors, some people who said, not now. Maybe we should study this a little more. Maybe now is not the time. How about we wait and do it the way we used to do it, where it took us seven years to deliver this. And I want to thank Elsie Jacobs for joining us and saying, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Our children have waited long enough. Their teachers have waited long enough. Their families have waited long enough. We're doing it now. And so we're so proud that we're breaking ground on this school and sending the further signal that goes beyond our school system to the communities that surround us, that we believe in them as well, that we believe in the value of their property, we believe in the investment they've made, saying to businesses, come on into Prince George's, this is a great place to invest, and we have a workforce that we're developing to also staff your businesses. And so we're sending a signal that will be heard, not only in Prince George's County, but be heard throughout the state and in the region, that Prince George's County is a county that's on the move, and it begins today. So I want to thank Team Prince George's, who made this happen today. Uh, Brandy Rogers McDonald, thank you so much. This is a bad lady who's helping to lead us through this. But thank all of you all for being here. May God continue to bless each of you, and we pray that God will keep blessing Prince George's County. Now, I do want to introduce the Honorable Joanne C. Benson. i have her come forward and say some words. Thank you. Good afternoon. I would like for the senators and the delegates to come up here, please. I refuse to stand in the sun by myself.
Not only that, but ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you all right now, I'm living right. I'm living so that I will not go to a place that is hotter than this. <laughs> I got a new hairdo and my hair just keeps blowing in my face. Oh, it's so wonderful. <laughs> there was once a Francis Scott Key Elementary School right around the corner here. Dr. Josh Freeman was the principal. They didn't come any finer than Josh Freeman. An innovative, a man ahead of his time who was very concerned about science, math, and technology. As a matter of fact, he pretty, pretty much is the father of that in Prince George's County. He worked hard, but the condition of the school did not warrant what he was looking for. And so a group of us gathered and decided, with the help of a wonderful school board and a superintendent, to relocate the children from Francis Scott Key here to what used to be Lorraine, a high school for girls. To all of you who are symbol, I want you to know that this could not have happened without the people that you see standing here. I want you to understand that we work hand in glove. We do not get caught up in who we like and who we don't like, but we keep Prince George's County and our love for the county as a major focus. So to honor the legacy of Dr. Drew and Dr. Freeman, the school became the Drew Freeman Middle School. This is a school, my wonderful friends, that has worked tirelessly in educating and empowering students. I speak for this community that's been waiting and waiting and waiting for over 25 years for this to happen. I am so pleased that the citizens, not only here in Suitland, but the citizens in Prince George's County are delighted and excited that this is happening. This school operated with the help of some of the finest, the best and brightest educators, not only in Prince George's County or the state of Maryland, but in the country. They did not allow the condition of the school or circumstances to get in the way of educating and empowering children. And so we stand here this afternoon just so happy that we have had the opportunity to participate in making this happen. We are going to be going into a new school that will continue to create lifelong learners, right. like that handsome gentleman who came up here to speak. He did such a wonderful job. And so we are working to ensure that that happens for every child. We want that level playing field. And while we are after, at it, we are very concerned that you all take a look to the right because we do, in fact, need a new Suitland High School, and we're going to work and work until it happens. And I understand it is on the drawing board. And so because of the heat, and because I'm not able to give this 20-minute speech, I just want to thank you all on behalf of this wonderful group that stands here. You know, it just makes such a difference when you have respect and love for each other. And these people work tirelessly. They work hard. They work nonstop. I could talk about each of them this afternoon, but you all told me I only had 20 minutes to do it. So I'll just cut it down to the two minutes. I uh, thank you all so very much. I want to thank the county executive. I want to thank the CEO. I want to thank the chair. 
I want to thank the school board members. I want to thank everybody who's played a role in making this wonderful project come to fruition. May God continue to bless you. And remember what I said. Please continue to live so that you will not go to a place that's hotter than this. <laughs> thank you. We are in Council Member Rodney Streeter's district. And if I yielded earlier to District 5 Council Member, <laughs> then I know I'm going to yield to my good friend of long standing, Rodney Streeter. I just want to say to the County Exec, our CEO, and all of you from the federal, state, and county level, not just the elected officials, the civic leaders, the business, the staff. Thank you for making this a reality. Untold generations will benefit from this and have the opportunity to fly higher than an eagle because individuals like you were committed to make us Prince George's proud today. Mr. Streeter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and thank all of you, this is a great day in District 7. Am I right? Yeah, right. Um, I have the unique uh, privilege of standing with my two at-large colleagues and being the only person who could officially welcome you to District 7. So I am welcoming <laughs> you to District 7. Um, when we came to office about two and a half years ago, we talked about you know, the priority that the school system was for our young people. And, you know, we had a lot of discussions about what needed to happen. Um, obviously, the system that we were operating under wasn't going to allow us to move forward as timely as we needed to, to make some things happen. And so whether or not you call it P3 or alternative construction financing or whatever you call it, what I call it is thinking outside the box. And that what, that's what was necessary for us to, to move an agenda forward, where we all say is the biggest priority we have in the county. So I want to commend most of the folks who are sitting in this audience today were part of those early discussions. And I'm so pleased to join them today as we break ground on this new reality. Um, so I'm very pleased to be here and stand with my colleagues and you all and make our school system take another leap on behalf of our children and our future. So thank you. Yeah. Mel, you want said it all, but all right. <laughs> I'm gonna save it for the last If you would bear with me just a minute, I, I was reluctant in introducing the members who stood up here. Uh, I have Delegate Andrea Harrison, who is uh, who's from the 24th Legislative District. I have wonderful, wonderful Obi Patterson, who is from the 25th dist uh, 26th District, who also is the Vice Chair of the Prince George's County Senators. I want him to stand so you all can see him. He is wonderful. And last but not least, we have Senator Melanie Griffith, who is very active in this community and has worked hard. And she is doing a miraculous job in uh, Annapolis, Maryland, watching our money. And, that, and you know, she's very important. God bless you, and I thank you for that. Good evening, everyone. I am Elsie Jacobs, president of the Suitland Action Team. When I heard of this event, I've been very sad because I worked in this building for 10 years. I stayed so sick. 
I stayed in the hospital because I was so cold in the winter and so hot in the summer. But you know what? Nobody heard us. Nobody cared. And I was so concerned since I've been out there 20 years ago, just think of what all these children and the staff had to go through. To Mark Fawcett, I want to say, I call Mr. Fawcett, he put so many bandages on Drew Freeman, but after a while, the bandages didn't work. So to the county exec, Dr. Monica, the county council, I want to say thank you because you, you figured it out. And nobody else has been smart enough to figure it out. Oh, they criticized you, but we didn't care because you, you figured it out. And I want to say thank you and God bless you. I just like to give Elsie Jacobs a special thank you because so many years ago when I represented this district, I could depend on Elsie to take care of whatever issue or bring whatever issues that were going on in the school system or in the neighborhood. So Elsie, thank you for your lifelong commitment. I love you. I'm not going to stand between you all and this dirt throwing. With that, I'm going to say all the thank yous have been given. And on behalf of the Board of Education, thank you for the partners, our leadership, and community for all you've done to make this project come to fruition. Now with that, we will begin the dirt throwing. And throw. I've got to get a hold of it. They on this side. Oh, Lord. Okay. Beautiful. One, two, three, go. There it is. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Got Kanye Jack.